What is going on everybody? Welcome back. Aaron Collins, Drone Pilot here again. I really appreciate you guys coming back to the channel. I just wanted to say enjoy this part three, but stay tuned to the end so we can look at the punch out list. What is all has to be done, what's left. Um, it's not that much. Uh, I know I've been making a lot of video comparatively like to the work that's been getting done, but uh, trust me, it is a long process and it's been a very uh, hard process for me. And uh, I just hope you guys are getting something from this content. All right, y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all. <clears throat> so we got a little update. Um, basically, I can't measure. I can't Missouri. Um, basically the top that I built already, no bueno. Uh, it would not go over the top of this little ray section I made, but I have since made another one. So we're going to do that entire process all over again where uh, unfortunately I have to stuff all these corners with fiberglass. I guess I could probably rip some uh, short pieces. Eh, still got to do the same thing. Doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. I did go ahead and order the gasket. Uh, I found a suitable gasket for this thing. Um, yeah, um, I got to figure out how we're going to secure this down when I'm away. So there's that, but uh, I swear it feels like I'm coming on here and I'm doing the same things over and over again in this video, but it's definitely uh, a lot of work involved, so I'm definitely doing something every single time. So anyway, um, this will be part three. Hopefully in this part three, we will finally get this stubborn box done or a stubborn person builds a box. That's what it should be. So, but yeah, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to, you know, fix all this up, start doing some resin, throw some fiberglass on, and then I'll, uh, I'll come back with another video. Hold tight. All right, y'all. We're back. So, I got the lid reconstructed, or the top, the door, what do you want to call it. Um, I did run out of uh, resin, like I pretty much... I think I did I might have said I would anywho uh, there's I just leak tested I did a little leak test on it I got a little leak oh, yeah I got a little leak right here in this corner so that'll need to get fixed but other than that I did a leak test on the whole thing I'll probably go ahead and put a couple more coats in this area because I think I had to sand this down a good bit in here. But uh, yeah, and as a matter of fact, you can see the wood here where it was a lot thicker in here with the resin, which I did that on purpose because it was a gap, but you know, pretty much everywhere else is really nice. Um, but yeah, I did that leak test and I got that one leak of, of everywhere. I gotta do a little bit of um, uh, filling too with uh, resin like this one particular spot right here so basically anywhere that that's the case I'll probably just do what I did here and lay it back down and then just dump resin down in there until it fills up this area and that'll be done um, pretty much got the majority of the sanding done the only other sanding I'm done, gonna do like I've been taking away all those big drip lines and all that good stuff uh, the only other thing I have to do, which this one's already sanded, uh, I just need to sand the box for primer and paint. So that's where we're at. A um, little bit more resin, just a tad more sanding, and then I got to figure out how I'm going to latch this thing and all that good stuff. So if you have any suggestions, by the time this video comes out and I haven't figured it out, you know, I would take uh, any. Um, any suggestions you might have in the comments and, and tell me you know if you've got something similar to this or you know I was thinking about doing something actually similar to the kayaks to actually have bungees on there but I really want to have the ability to lock it so try to figure out how to do that so but yeah the uh, <clears throat> door fits on there pretty good I don't know if I can do this one handed but 
Yeah, there we go. Way better than the other one where it wouldn't actually fit. So, yeah, man. Super excited. Can't wait to get this thing, get some paint on this thing, and get it in the trailer and let her eat. Let's talk a little bit about why I'm doing what I'm doing. Whew. So much fun, you have no idea. So, what I found was that the sandpaper was doing a horrible job. Um, I was having to pretty much uh, put sandpaper on the little sander every I don't, man 60 seconds or something because it was just getting so gummed up um, and what we really want to focus on here is getting this surface as smooth as we possibly can so that's what I'm doing with the grinder getting out these little um, bad areas too that thing makes really light work of that stuff a lot of this stuff I've already filled with the exception of, like these little pieces on the top up here but anyway as you can see it's you know much 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 smoother you see these little slick areas in here where the grinder hasn't touched it yet that's because all this area around here was raised and it's kind of fat so what we're doing is we're getting it all down to where it looks like this right here so with the next time when we put resin on here it is going to just be glass and smooth as can be and that's the next step i got the top out there um getting ready it needs to have a coat of um, resin put on. This stuff is almost ready. This top is almost ready to get uh, resin on it. Uh, and uh, pretty much all the sides as well. I'm you know, almost done sanding all of those down. You can see a few slick areas in there, here and there, that'll have to come out. But I wanted to, you know, I had you guys over on the toolbox. I wanted to show you exactly the process of getting this stuff all down to where it needed to be so that I could put the final coat of resin and then once that final coat of resin is dried we'll come back with um, probably around a 220 or something um, kind of light and then then we're gonna add the paint or the primer and then the paint all right Take a look. Pretty glassy looking. You see where it's a little thicker in certain areas, but it's pretty slick. Um, and the reason is some of the areas got sanded a lot more than others. So I try to lay it on there as thick as possible. We'll get a glassy outcome. And same thing with the top or the lid pretty glassy on there not a lot of thick spots I did come back and add some right in here because it was a little low but yeah and then I went ahead and coated the edges too because they're gonna need to be waterproof as well I'm just gonna keep on coating those with uh, the uh, got resin all over my arm uh, with the resin but yeah That's what it looks like so basically 
same thing you know all over uh, I'll do this exact same process uh, obviously I just sanded this stuff when this dries I'll turn it on one of the sides and do one whole side uh, all at once just like I just did and then repeat you know you know five more times on that uh, also that one I will flip that upside down and do the inside of that one as well I want the entire thing uh, encapsulated in uh, resin for the lid so that'll be do I'll be doing that as well so that's it that's it that's the that's the final stages I'll do a little bit of um, sanding once all this stuff is all set up really nice and uh, hard and then prime then paint that's it here we go side number two It's trying to catch um, your runs. Um, it's really important that you kind of watch the side as you're doing this flat side to make sure if anything's going over on the sides that you that you get it. Um, it's just a pain in the butt to sand, like, as I've learned throughout this process. Go on. That dog right there is always into something. He is something else. And the right pistol, huh? Good dog. He's one climbing machine too. <laughs> hey guys, take it easy over there. It's Johnny Cash over there. He gets hell from these other roosters. Anyway, let me shoot this dog. Yep, yep. Go lay down somewhere. Uh uh, go lay down somewhere. He knows he's not supposed to be over here already. He's a smart dog. Look how glassy that is though. It's incredible. After you do a, a good job sanding, it's, it's amazing what this stuff turns out looking like. I tried doing it with a roller, by the way. And a roller kind of leaves like little spikes everywhere in it. That sucks. So I'm not gonna be using that. Paintbrush is fine. Just lay it on there thick and spread it out. Try to spread it out. Thanks for that. Try to spread it out as evenly as you can. Uh, to get the best results obviously I, I can see now where I got a little bit more over here than I did over here it's not too dry yeah there we go kind of spread some of that over here in this direction it's pretty easy while it's still wet same with this over here It'll kind of flatten back out too after you wipe on it like that. As long as you don't take too much of the resin out of one spot, it'll kind of flatten itself down. But man, it's glassy. This acetone some really nasty stuff too, I'll tell you what. It uh gets on your skin, it feels real cold, but if you don't put these brushes in this stuff and mix it around, let it sit for a minute and rinse them out real good, you can take it out of that brush. Alright, hanging on to the next one. Alright, so here we go. Um that's it. That's the the last side right there that I just coated. Um 
the only thing that's got to happen now is I need to go over with some 220 and throw down some primer and get it all you know nice and plush looking and then throw some some coats of paint on there um, right now this top side still curing you can see it's pretty shiny when it gets to looking like this you can that's a good transition right there to see this from that once it looks like this I'll pick it up put it on the table um, and let it cure probably let it sit there for tomorrow uh, until it's really really super hard um, in the Sun will do a great job of that I think the heat um, I do have enough um, resin to put another coat on this and then also on the sides I want to put another coat on the sides so I got plenty of resin to do that and hardener good to go so um, hindsight's 2020 I wish I would have known um, you know a couple things sanding ain't gonna work you need a grinder uh, especially if uh, you have your surface prep and you put a bunch on there and you don't spread it evenly you're gonna have to grind that stuff down you're gonna need a grinder with like a little sanding pad I got a little greater four and a half inch grinding wheel that knocked it out uh, which is part of this video um, I was sanding and like every 60 seconds I would have to replace the sandpaper it is really not a great process doing it that way so that's that would be my recommendation is use a grinder um, so yeah uh, pretty excited um, that it's nearing completion I'm ready to get that thing bolted down in the truck and go fishing honestly um, it's been a few weeks and I'm starting to have withdrawals so anyway we'll let this thing cure up and that's where we're at for right now all right welcome back everybody um, Saturday the second third somewhere there whatever day that is um, losing track anyway I got the um, the gasket in this morning or, or late yesterday evening I was gonna share this with you because I started trying to fit it this morning and was having some issues and I guess the, the primary issue was that the inside dimension of the gasket said it was five millimeters which that's true um, close enough anyway however as you know if you've watched any of the videos so is this uh, plywood that I've been working with it is also a five millimeter thickness however basically after adding all of the resin and all of the um, other uh, fabric and all that good stuff carbon or the uh, fiberglass um, it got too thick to where I couldn't put that on there so what I had to end up doing is you can see if you look on the edges of all that wood over there you can see where I just got out here this morning I just ground it all down and you can't really taper it you need it to be a straight up and down you know width of five millimeters which I think it's probably this is probably set up more for like a thinner piece of metal it's not it says five millimeter but there's these metal brackets on the inside I don't know how well you can see or if it'll focus at all on this but there's little pieces of metal and it's periodic through here it's not even like everywhere um, obviously that's what would give you your flexibility but um, it seemed like every time I needed to bend it around a corner there was a piece of metal in there so that was called that caused a little bit of a problem but uh, yeah uh, it's on there I just uh, because I had to sand it so much obviously I, I had to come in here and sand along this edge on the outside as well and basically I threw the gasket on there and then I fiberglassed at the base or the resin anyway I coated it back around which I didn't go through in any spots I don't think but we're gonna give it a water test when we're done I think if anywhere it might be right in this area but like I said it's not really a big deal um, to put resin on there it's a pretty easy process so not too not too concerned about it. excuse me when I look at that like there's a little hole right there I might have to fill in but anyway um, tops over there just coated it with resin again um, man I mixed a really hot tune up on this one it started drying up on me I ended up wasting a lot unfortunately but if you get it before it gets too daggum hard 
be able to knock that right off of there. It's not a big deal. Anyway, uh, that's where I'm at right now. Getting ready to clean up some of these chunky bits here. And uh, But I'm super excited with, you know, the way that the gasket worked out. It didn't, probably took me about an hour to get everything sanded down to where it needed to be today. And I had to also make some adjustments to the inside of this. Obviously, I did not consider that. So I had to come in here and kind of uh, sand each edge on the interior side. And then also I kind of tapered back the corner of the wood, gives a little bit extra. Um, but everything works out fine. Um, I test fit it and all that good stuff. It's, you know, like a glove. So I am probably gonna end up putting some bungees on this thing. Um, I think that's what my idea is. The same way the newer Hobies have with the little button on the top and it's got like the, just the, the band that kind of goes over it to hold it in place because it, it's gonna ride a little higher now. But this thing is gonna also get carpet too. I'm going to glue some carpet on this one, some uh, marine carpet. I'm gonna marine carpet the tops of the cradles and that top. That way if the boat sits on it, it doesn't uh, rub through or, you know, cause any issues because it was already a really tight tolerance before and I think it will be just like microscopic after the carpets on there so anyway that's where we're at um, either today late today or tomorrow I'll probably try to get everything sanded back down and then ready for paint and then uh, the next thing will be the primer and paint stage so I'm, I'm super ready to get out on the river and uh, you know so I need to get this done it's been like three weeks Two weeks at least since I've been. Anyway, see y'all in the next video. All right, here we go. Welcome back. I'm gonna have a little quick update for you guys. So, since the last time I made a video, I don't know if I've talked about it, but I've been doing a lot of uh, research on how I'm gonna finish this thing up. This is one of the things that I was gonna add. Basically, is these. Um, latches for it's kind of like a same thing as in a boat you know to open it's really hard to do with one hand so hold on just a second to modify them the not the actual hinges themselves or the opening points but the the bracket that came with it it was just like a little bitty narrow bracket it was a little bit longer <clears throat> lengthwise but the issue I was running into is that it wasn't deep enough to go down below this section so that when I would screw it in the the screws would come out of the back side so basically I had some bracketry laying around, ended up using those there. The actual shape of these brackets is they're kind of like, a, there's like two 90s that are kind of long. They come out at this point, come out this way like that. So it's kind of like a U shape. But I actually use these, if you go back in the videos on the installation of the, um, the, the uh, fish finder for the, um, transducer I had some of these brackets I had one that I used for the to mounting the transducer on the on the Hobie which, which worked out really meant so anyway that's kind of what this process looks like also update on I did order a cable kit I have a turnbuckle and cable kit that I ordered for securing the box it's got like some you know similar to pad eyes what I did order was a um, I think it calls like a light kit a light kit um, it's for hanging suspending lights and uh, it's like some fine cable it's like a 7x7 cable but it's got a plastic coating on it 
So the next step for me is to figure out where I'm gonna put those little pad eye looking deals on the box where I'm gonna mount those and how I'm gonna fasten it to the trailer. Another thing where I saw what I think I solved one of my problems is that if I were to mount that box in this trailer without putting anything on the bottom, we would probably get a lot of rubbing. Uh, I'd probably rub right through the, um, the resin and fiber. Fiberglass is pretty easy. So I ordered this from Walmart, I think. It was like 14 bucks, a little fitness mat. And I will, you know, basically put that in the floor. Um, and that'll be the base for it. That'll keep, I think, the box from, you know, or the metal, the grate from rubbing through the bottom of the box. So that is the plan. This is like a, I thought it was black, but it looks a little bit gray. Don't really matter. It's gonna be covered up. It's kind of like a graphite looking color. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna use on the bottom of the trailer. And paint primer, the funny thing about it is the paint primer is the thing I ordered first and everything is here now for the exception of the paint and primer. So that's what we're waiting on. And I'm gonna get this thing installed in the uh, trailer uh, once the paint and everything is on there. I'm gonna do some more test fitting, but um, I did get some carpet too for the tops of the the cradles. And I'm probably gonna put some a little bit on the box or on the top here too, not 100%, but it's marine carpet. It's super cheap as well um, I've been letting this box stay outside for the last several days to kind of let it you know fully cure all the way so everything's pretty good just needs a quick sanding and then you know pop primer and paint so anyway I'll follow up I'm going to cut these mats in the right size because they're obviously if I put two of them together it's gonna be too wide for the trailer um, looks like they're about 20 yeah, they're 22 by 22 by half inch thick. So the trailer's three and a half foot wide. You know, had to cut them down a little bit. Not a big deal. Anyway, my follow up. All right, the mat is cut. And it is pretty much the dimensions of the box. You know, I got this um, conduit over here on the sides of the trailer that I had to kind of compensate for, but the box is this exact same shape all the way up to the front. Um, so there's some extra space up there, obviously, on the sides, but you won't be able to tell that once the box is in here. It'll look just like, it's pretty much the exact dimensions of the box. So, cushion for the entire box. That's what it looks like. Pretty straightforward basically I used the right side of this these grooves for measurement and I just went 20 inches that way and 20 inches that way and that gives me the inside dimension which is 40 inches from the inside of that conduit to the inside of that conduit which is exactly the same way I um, measured up the box so that's how I got the inner dimensions I mean I guess I could have um, you know kind of bumped it out right there in that one spot but you know man it's gonna be all good. All right, that's what it looks like. But let's square away some things first. Um, I had no idea uh, how how huge of an undertaking this would be. Um, so I'm learning just as much from doing as uh, maybe, hopefully you guys are getting something from it besides my frustration and not uh, knowing how to do this uh, box. Um, but I have learned a tremendous amount along the way. Um, I'm going to start throwing some links in the description to let you guys see what all the parts I was using and let you know the tally of the bill. Cause at this point I didn't think I was going to spend quite as much money as I was. Uh, but I'm pretty much sure I have at least about $140 in resin only. That's uh, not including anything else, any other material. So but anyway, let's let's go through this, run through this closeout list real quick, and talk about what's got to be done. So um, there's there's needs to be touch up in a few areas, um, like for instance on the top the lid where I put the latches in. Uh, there's some cracking up there because I did not reinforce that with fiberglass. That needs to be done. Um, uh, 
there may be a couple areas that need to be um, have a little bit more resin on there. Um, I think that's it for the touch up. I just need to make sure. Oh yeah, I was trying to when I was trying to install the 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 latches um, on the inside where the brackets are. I was actually bumping it out with a hammer and I actually cracked some uh, resin on the back side of the raised lip. So that'll have to be touched up. Just you know, get in there with a with my Dremel and grind out that small little area and then throw some resin on it. Should be completely fine. Um, anchoring system. This one. It's probably taking me the longest. I already have the anchoring system in now, and I am just trying to figure out how to make it work. Um, you know, when you envision things, um, you think things are gonna work out pretty seamlessly, but this one's gonna take a lot of deliberation. Um, and I may hit, end up having to go a different direction. It just all depends. Um, the box, it won't move um, in the trailer if the kayak's on there. It, you know, that's, you know, it shouldn't move. Uh, because the box is going to be pressed down onto the foam and it should grab pretty tight in there. And, I mean, I'm not really concerned about it. And as a matter of fact, the box can't come out when the ladder rack is installed on there. It can't come out. So, but anyway, so the anchoring or the fixing it to the trailer, that is the next big step. Um, next would be, uh, I ordered the paint and primer first. Still hasn't got here. Uh, it'll be here Tuesday. I think the only other thing that I'm actually waiting on to get here is the uh, marine carpet, which will be here between like the 14th and the 19th or something like that. But that is not really holding me up from finishing this project, to be honest with you. Uh, that's more of a, you know, protect the kayak hole type of deal because it's going to go on top of the, um, the little carriers on top of the box. So uh, that's just something I wanted to do. Um, primer and paint, like I said, it'll be here Tuesday. Um, that'll be, today is the 8th, so, um, it'll be here, you know, in just a few days. Um, and then the installation, that, that would be the final installation. Uh, that would be the only thing left. So, basically, you know, we have to touch up a few areas, add some more resin, maybe add some fiber to some of the areas that need reinforcement even more so on the lid and primer paint and then actually install it. So, um, the next portion that I hope, I hope that I can post, uh, the fourth part to its completion for the exception of the carpet. So anyway, I really appreciate you guys stopping by, um, drop a like, subscribe. Uh, if you're getting something useful from this channel, I appreciate you coming back and, uh, us learning together. Y'all have a good one.